Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. And listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Man, oh, man. Almost forgot I had one this morning, but I'm okay. I'll tell you where I am in a little bit. You know, I, I get around, man, there's so much. But, man, good morning, everybody. Um, You know, today I, w- I was having a, a conversation with my wife last night. And we were talking about um, our plans. You know, we often sit down, you know, just like a married couple. I mean, you know, you know, we're married. You know, we have children. We have aspirations. We have hopes. We, I mean, we have things we want. You know, when you're married, you know, I mean, it's important to sit with your partner. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. It's common sense, really. It's important to sit down with the person that you've chosen and decided to share your life with and and have multiple conversations on a lot of things. And we try to make sure that all of our conversations aren't always just business related and always kid related, you know, because that, that, that becomes, it's a part of it, but it, it, it weighs so much on the marriage that, because that, that's the grunt work of being married, you know, your children, your family, your bills, your your mortgage, your your car notes, you know, the what's due, what's coming up. And if you're not careful, you'll you'll start that becomes the focal point of you all's conversation. And this woman or man or person that you've decided to have this life with, all of a sudden, they're an extension of your business. And you guys become business partners or whatever, and, and 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 it just gets so. Anyway, I'm just saying that that it's important to sit down and have these conversations. But it's even more important to have the other conversations. You know, it's it's important with the person that you're planning on making the run with to sit down and talk about other things. You know, on on a more upbeat note. You know, uh, we were having a conversation, and she was reminding me of what she loved about me. And then I, in turn, was turning around telling her the things that I admired about her and loved about her. And we kind of have these all the time, you know, where we sit down and we talk about the things that we still enjoy about one another. Or we may talk about some of the things that we miss in one another. But we constantly have these conversations about appreciation. You know, it's so important, man, that the other person feels appreciated. So th- these things are important, but we got into the conversation deeper last night, and I was telling her about this idea that I had, 
and that I wanted her to help me with and, and make a phone call for me because she knows these people and I was going to be doing this. And then my wife reminded me of something. Now, once again, you know, as always, you know, when I'm talking to you, I just keep it as real as I can. I don't know the Bible inside out. I, I can't quote to you scriptures and tell you exactly where it is. I just, you know, I heard her say it, but it kind of blew by me. I was I was telling her about something I wanted to make happen, and she reminded me that there's a scripture somewhere, and somebody emailed it to me today, I'm sure, where the Bible reminds us not to be anxious for anything. Don't be anxious for something. And, you know, it, it really mattered to me at that point yesterday that she brought this to my attention because how many times I've been guilty of that in my past and I've learned better now, but every now and then I need to be reminded, you know, and um, I think what that, what, what she was saying to me was, you know, I've gotten to a point in my life and, and we all should get to a point where, you know, you, you've heard old people say this, if you're going to pray about something, then don't worry about it. And if you're going to worry about it, don't pray about it. Back to this. Be anxious for nothing. Don't, if you're going to trust in God, then do that. And trusting in him means sometimes you got to be patient. God has never been too late. You don't know the plan he has. You don't know. You don't really always know his will. You definitely don't know his route, his way of doing anything. So he's always on time. He's always been there on time for me. He's always been there on time for you. How many times have you thought it was over only to find out it's really just begun? How many times have people wrote you off? There are those of you who have lost jobs, but you are still maintaining. But man, God has already began the turnaround process for many of us. Some of us lost jobs and now have better jobs. Some of us lost jobs and now has forced us to rekindle that dream and that vision for a business we had. It's sometimes the mishap is the thing you need to make something good happen. See, a lot of times we get so comfortable in our life where we just... um. We get complacent. We, we just settle in. And when this is it and this is what I'm doing. But in actuality, God has a tremendous amount of abundance for you. He has an amazing amount of things. He has all these boxes packaged up with your name on them that he's willing to ship. If you would just al align yourself with some of his will so you could get some of these things. How many times have you thought it was over and it didn't really go over? How many times have you thought, have well, this is it, and it wasn't it at all? Well, how many times have you thought, well, it don't look like this going to work out, and it didn't work out, but then something better came along? How many times has that happened? You, you've got to realize this, man. I was talking to a family who had got displaced from the Katrina uh, thing that happened down there in New Orleans, and man, I, uh, when they said, yeah, we got a displaced from Katrina, and I braced myself because, oh, woe is me, here comes this story. I got to hear this, and I got to be encouraged and think of something. It was totally different. They totally, totally blew me away. Man, the brother said, man, it was actually the best thing that ever happened to my family. And I went, whoa. And he said, yeah, man. He said, because what happened was, he said, I got settled in. He said, plus, I was doing some things outside of my marriage down there. He said, I was doing some stuff in the streets I ain't need to be doing. He said, man, it all got washed away. We thought our life would never be the same. But he said, man, my life ain't need to be the same. He said, man, now we live up here in Texas. We got a house. Don't know nobody. He said, I ain't got nobody I know to get into trouble with. He said, man, I done rediscovered my wife, how beautiful she really is, how much my family really was counting on me. And he said, man, it straightened me up, man. He said, so I got to tell you, Steve, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Now, that's not always the case, but it's how you look at a situation. But just don't be anxious for anything because God got a fix for you if you just let him work. So just stay on course. Stay focused. Don't lose faith. Don't be anxious, man. Just just 
Stay in the wheel. Let God work with you. He got some great stuff in store for you. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it is time to start this thing. And start this thing, we will. S-T-A-R-T. S-T starts with a lot of great things in my life. S-T start. S-T Steve. S-T stutter. STs have played played a pivotal role in my life. Do you understand? I do, clearly. Gratitude does not start with an ST because it is far more superior than stuttering, starting, or steam. It is gratitude. The three twos that can change your life. If you open your morning with gratitude, it directly affects your attitude, which is in direct correlation to your altitude. Let the church say amen. Amen. Amen Amen again. Starring Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mouth of the South, Kill, better known as Junior, the legend of nephew Tommy, and myself, moi. Junior, uh, what's on your mind today, sir? (laughs) Well, Unc, we coming back, man. You know, I'm thinking about motivations. You know, now I've recessed the first half of the year. Have you recessed the first half? And what's your motivation for the second half? When you recess something, that means you go off to have lunch and to play on the playground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, when you, what is that? When you get your tooth recessed is when someone punches you <laughs> and causes it to go further <laughs> up into your gum line. Whoa. You have had your tooth recessed. <laughs> yeah. That's how we're starting off. Now, <laughs> we first going to have to master the language. And, cause, and if I correct you, you yeah. have made a severe mistake. You know what I mean? Because uh, I know exactly. exactly. Yeah. I know mean. exactly. I mean, yeah. I know exactly what you meant, but I took this moment to show you that yeah. I knew better than you at that yeah. particular moment about the usage of grammar. Yeah. The yeah. playground, though, now, that's what I love. Yeah, well, that's recess. Nothing else really mattered to me. Anybody say, we're going to take a recess. Like, when I was at a meeting one time, and they said, oh, we're going to recess the meeting. And I went, wait, they got a playground? That's the first thing I thought. Dog, because that's, that's all that mattered to me. That, that, was, one of, bomb, that was my huh? favorite subject at school. It yeah. was all that mattered to me. We're going to stop the meeting. We're going to take a recess. I said, cool. They got playground. This is going to be slick right here. I don't yeah. like none of these people in this meeting, but I'm going to go over there and play by my damn self. So that'll be just fine. Yeah. I was the only kid that knew how to seesaw by himself. I jumped. Yeah, I just jump as high as I could with the board between my legs and come on back down. Yeah. I just dealt with it. Oh, that was the worst thing on the playground. Yeah, I just dealt with it. Yeah, because it's hard to get somebody to come seesaw with you when you stutter. Oh no. Yeah, I could I could have seesawed by the time I convinced this total stranger <laughs> come over here and get on the other side of this board. So you just got it over oh. with? Yeah, I went on up there and just jumped yeah. high as I could, slammed back down to the oh, ground. Man. I was I didn't seesaw, I just saw. Mm. <laughs> All right. Yes. Thank you. Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, the nephew is back too. We're all back, and it's time to run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time now to start your morning off with the nephew and run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? Uh, one of the greatest of all time, ladies the. and gentlemen. The. Matter of fact, uh, uh, the, the greatest host, won't you bring it out? Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, the <laughs> greatest ready. prank I have ever heard in my entire life. Raymond. In the closet. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey, who there? Can you hear me? Yeah, Bella, who's there? This Raymond. Man, speak up. I can't hear you. Who? This is Raymond. Man, speak up. I can't hear you. Who is this? Raymond. 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 Veranda is my sister. Veranda, brother? Yes. What's up? What's up, man? What's up? Somebody done broke in the house. They in the house right now. I'm in the Hold on, hold on, hold on. Man, I damn, I better can he what you saying? Somebody done what? Somebody done broke in a house. Well, why the hell you whispering? 
because they in the house right now. I'm scared. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You saying somebody done broke in the <laughs> house and they still in there? Somebody done broke in the house. I'm in the house now. I'm, Hold I, on. Wait a minute. You saying somebody done broke into your damn house and they still in there? Yes. What are you doing sitting up in there? Why are you ain't calling the police? I'm in the closet. I'm in the closet and I'm trying to get somebody to. Hold on, hold I, on. I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Man, you saying somebody in the house, in, 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 in your damn house right now? I don't know what to do. Oh, this up. Okay, wh wh where you live at? Where you live at? I'm on 36th Street. Because I'm at 32 and a half. You know what? Hold on. I'm going to call the laws. Nah. Wait, wait, you wait, know, wait, 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 wait. Man, minute. you know what? What? Wait a minute. Don't call the police. You send your to the house, somebody finna, 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 finna kill you, and you talking about you don't want them arrested? We got some illegal stuff in the house. Don't call nobody. Don't call. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Now, you saying, hold on. You saying don't call the damn law. You don't have some what in the house? Don't call nobody because we, we got it. I got some illegal stuff in the house. Don't do it. Man, what the you got in the house? <laughs> Man, you know what this is bad, Doc. You know what? You send your ass up in there. That's probably why they in that house. Now you to set your ass up in the house. That's who in there now. That's a, I guarantee you that. What you what you got in there? I can't. I can't say it. I can't say it. I just want you to help me. You know what, man? Let me tell you something. I'm gonna tell you the best thing to do. Even though the people in your house right now, you need to just let me call. The Man, you need to let me call the damn law. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to get your money here. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't call. Don't call. I'm gonna, but you know what, man? I'm going to tell you that. Call, I'm not going to go out there. You don't stay down there. I'm going to tell you now. I get called the law. Don't call. I get called the law. Hold on. I can get my wife to call right now. Don't call the police. Don't call them. Because I, I, it's too much illegal stuff in the house. Don't do don't it, please. Don't call the police. Don't do it. Don't call the police. Man, but I'm going to tell you something, man. Honestly, I can't do a thing because I ain't going to go down there. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I can't. This fool's going to be telling me don't even call the damn law. You know what, man? Look at here, Doc. I'm going to be honest with you. I go. I ain't going to go down there. I'm going to tell you right down now. You know what? Now, first thing I'm going to tell you now. Now, I ain't going to take my down there. First of all, they may be tapping my damn line. And I ain't got to do with this. You're going to get they your shit on they your don't, own. They Doc, don't. listen. Man, look. They don't, they don't. I can call 911. Hold on. Baby, look, go ahead and call them. Because you know what? You're finna get your kid out now. They don't know who you are. I just I need bet, you. Man, you know what? And I ain't finna stay on this phone with your so they can find out. Because you know wait, what? Wait, no offense, no stop. Listen, wait. I call a lot. I ain't getting in that. I ain't, man, you must be a damn fool. I ain't finna get in that one. So I'm going to tell you what you can do. Doc, I call the law. I'm finna have my wife right now. You know what? You may not like it now, but you appreciate me later. Because you know what? You're finna get your monkey ass. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just whisper. Doc. I think they outside. I think. Man, you know what? This is some crazy <laughs> Doc, you done set your <laughs> up. Don't say nothing. I'm going to call your sister <laughs> for one. Don't get no say nothing. She's sitting up there talking about not calling the damn law. Damn fool. You got to keep your monk ass in that closet. I'm going to tell you right now, you're a damn fool. You walk out because I'm going to tell you now, they sure going to kill your stupid <laughs> Man, you know what? I ain't going to lie to you, man. The only thing I can tell you a damn I can call the law. You finna go down. And I'm gonna tell you now, I ain't going down with I don't know why you really gonna call me unless you want some help. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, I ain't finna jeopardize myself nor my damn family over your <laughs> around here. The only thing I could do, I could help you out in one way. I can call the law. Now my wife's got a cell phone. What you want me to do? Will you come get me? You must be a damn fool. I'm not. Hell no, I ain't going down. I ain't going. You know what, man? Look. Look. I can't get in that. <laughs> and my wife and I already called the police. I'm gonna tell you right now, they finna come. Can you, can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Shut your damn mouth. Shut up. Shut up. Can you shut your damn mouth right now? Can you hear me? Shut up. They don't know in the house. That's why they don't shoot the shit out of him. Don't peek out that damn door. Can I say something? Man, you need to shut your damn mouth. Shh. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You know what? You just got pranked by Man, your boy. Man, y'all dirty. Dirty. You just got pranked. You, you just me? got pranked. Why y'all some dirty? <laughs> 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 that's, that's, <laughs>
I know damn well, man. Dog, you just got <laughs> pranked by your boy Wendell, man. You... <laughs> now I'm sweating like hell, sitting up in this damn house with drawers, old man. And you sit up here, want to play with some... Man, look at here, boy. I'm sweating like hell. You... <laughs> Why are you sweating? You was finna die, because I damn sure no one's finna come down to the house. That's for sure. I know you weren't coming to the house. Com- I, look I, at, to to I heard it in your voice. I said, okay, you know what? He ain't coming to get me. Man, I'm sitting up in here right now. Man, I might need to take off from work, boy. <laughs> I'm playing like here. I'm sitting up in here, Doug. Hey, let me ask you something, man. What is the baddest radio show in the land? Can't be nobody but the Steve Harvey's morning show with none other than nephew Tommy with his crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Veronica Classic <laughs> prank from the nephew. Thank you, Nev. Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO with Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building, ready for your love questions right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news. Celebrity Family Feud, hosted by our very own Steve Harvey, is back. Yes, it is. Uh, We'll talk about that, of course. And congratulations to the father of the bride, Eddie Murphy. Plus, in entertainment news, Brittany Griner's guilty plea. What does it mean? And uh, we got to send out prayers of healing for Pastor John Gray, who was hospitalized in the critical care unit. We'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey. All right, Leah in New Jersey writes, I was dating a guy that was separated but had not gotten a divorce. His wife accused me of being a homewrecker, but when I met her husband, he had his own apartment and he was honest about everything. She blames their separation on me. Why do some women have misplaced anger in these situations? Well, you got to blame somebody. And she mm-hmm. figuring if you the one that's dating him, you the one that caused the rift. That's an automatic. You know how many times that didn't happen? That yeah. ain't nothing new. I don't know why mm-hmm. do women have this place. Hey, it's to, it's this place to you. She <laughs> thinks she done nailed it. Why you think it ain't you? <laughs> you know. <laughs> but when you oh, met him, God. you had uh, 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 his apartment. And that's probably true. Yeah, but she going to blame somebody the moment. This is all the evidence she got. She don't know it's her. She don't know it's her. Mm-hmm. She don't know it's him. So she done found a reason, and it's you. And it's really yeah. not you. It's probably not even her. It's probably just a shortcoming in him. Why do women always try to find another reason other than they pick choice of men that makes it a, the, 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 the cause and effect? Sometimes you just pick the wrong man, that's all. Ain't all no right. big deal. You can get it right. All right, uh, moving on to Tandra in Phoenix. Tandra says, I've been dating a man for eight months and I've only been to his house once. He lives an hour away from me and he comes to visit me or we meet up in the middle. He FaceTimes me from his house, so I don't think he lives with anyone. Is there a reason he doesn't invite me to his home? What's up with him? Yeah, he got other things happening. Yeah. (laughs) Like what? I don't know. I I don't know if it's a petting zoo in there. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if she stay in another room. Animal? But you're not coming over. You've been over there one time. That was a close call. You can't come back over here. That's mm. all to it. Y'all meeting halfway and all this here. You don't never mm. come out there. So, you know, come on now. Use your intuition. Whatever your intuition is telling you, mm-hmm. that's probably what it is. Mm-hmm. So, What part of the house is he in, dog, when he face that? Oh, he is close to the balcony. <laughs> Wherever he yeah, close, sad. he close, close to it, but where he can step out any second if he see movement in that kitchen or something. Oh, yeah, he he's not in the that family room. No, hell no, he ain't no. in no clothes. He ain't in the den where it ain't no out. No, he got he got to be able to step out real quick. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is strategic. I'm and I mean, you. tell him to take a tour. Let, let him tell him you want to see his apartment on tour. Tell him to Facetime you tour. Then you'd see all the stuff in that crib in the corner. You know. Like it's hot in Phoenix now. It's hot in Phoenix. Ah. Little swing set over there, dividing the living room and, and the kitchen. <laughs> you know, open the refrigerator. What is all that Similac in there? Uh, uh, <laughs> all right, moving it. on to uh, Katina in Chicago. Katina writes: My husband and I went to a graduation party for his niece. 
One of his exes was at the party and I had a conflict with her recently because she DM'd my husband and he showed it to me. She apologized after I called her out on it and my husband is upset because I didn't speak to her. Do I have to be nice to her? No, nah, not really. <laughs> I don't really know how you gonna be nice. <laughs> no, you ain't got it. You know, you confronted her, she apologized. Now he wants you to be nice. That's his That's his world. You ain't got to be in that. You didn't pick her. He picked her. Mm. You didn't ex her. He exed her. So now if we exes, let's be exes. Yeah. I'm but an expert at that. you don't speak to your right ex? You don't, you don't speak to your ex? For what? <laughs> I don't. I, and I'm petty about that. What is, what is, we, what is we talking about? I mean, it's just common courtesy. Mm-mm. You just speak no. to a person. No, I, no. I wanted to be an ex so we could stop talking. Hello. <laughs> That, that was, was your goal. That was one of the key, <laughs> key. That was one of the key uh, developmental parts of this breakup. Oh, How can I not talk to this person no more? <laughs> I don't got to hear this. Thank you. I, I, I don't care what you think. That's fine. But Whatever it, you think, that's fine. What is we like talking you, about? Why? What are we talking about, Cheryl? It's not like you moved away. You still got to exist, live in the same world. You might run into world. this world. Running, live in the world. You ain't finna stay over here, though. <laughs> I hope I do run into you. <laughs> and Ooh, then I'm what? Petty. I must be petty because I ain't speaking to you. I look dead. <laughs> you won't say I'm not saying nothing. Thank you. Yeah, last thing you if said I, to me wasn't encouraging. Yeah. If I do see you. What? I, it, Okay, give me some places I could see and let me tell you what I do. Well, like at the grocery store in the produce Quit shopping. Department. Huh? Oh, Starbucks. Yeah. I, I, I lost my appetite. I ain't hungry. No. <laughs> Starbucks. You'll never Steve. eat again. Starbucks. Yeah. I like I like I like I like uh uh Dunkin' Donut coffee. <laughs> Oh, you know, y'all talking about running into him like that. You talking about running I I I got it here. Oh, you was talking about with the car. It, on the freeway, yeah. Uh-uh. Awesome. Uh-uh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're moving on with these killers. Uh, we're moving on. All right, last one, Steve. Marie in Grand Prairie says, I work with a lady that smells like bacon grease every day. It's in her wigs, it's in her clothes, and her work yeah. bag. I'm embarrassed what? for her because... Uh-huh, uh-huh. She says, Marie says, I'm embarrassed for her because our co-workers call her a grease ball. There are only four blacks at our job, so I don't like this at all. Should I get out of my comfort zone and tell her that she smells bad? I mean, you know, that's what Marie wants to know. Or you could just braid eggs and toast to work every yeah. day. That way she would just smell like Have breakfast. a meal. Well, that way she'll just smell like breakfast and won't just eat the bacon. I want to taste her bacon. You know, she love bacon. She had to, she in there cooking bacon, but you might have to. Uh, what, I don't know. I don't know do? if you all are close enough for that. Mm. You know. It doesn't sound like it. She well, just says I work with a lady. She's they're just both black women at a at the same job. You know, her mm. wig smell like grease. So maybe she got a studio apartment. Yeah, that's all wig in clothes, bothers me. All in her wig, though. <laughs> that bothers me. How does your wig smell like grease? She smells well, at least it's what well, you know. The, the problem is it's not we the love smell; bacon. it's the quality of wig. In the words of Ricky Smiley, he uh, dated a girl wig was so country, it was so crunchy that it felt like a uh, Easter basket grass. <laughs> 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 I, I heard Ricky Smiley say that. I was uh, like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> like Easter basket grass. <laughs> man, you remember bro. that damn grass, man? <laughs> I remember that grass. Like Green that. grass. Um, oh. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, CLO. That's all we have for you today. Uh, coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, he's back. Sunday night was the season premiere of Celebrity Family Feud. It was hosted by our very own Steve Harvey. And the cast of Abbott Elementary were the special guests. We love that show. Great show. And so, Steve, we got to ask you, are you excited about this new season? Yeah. 
you know, good and well, I ain't see this show. So what is your <laughs> Aww. Me? I watched oh, that's it. It right, was so you, good. Cheryl, you were all I, in Paris. I don't know what you asking me. <laughs> you already you, know I ain't seen it. <laughs> but you tape them beforehand, right? Yeah, but uh, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't, who was on but the show? But you had fun. Did you know about Abbott Elementary? Did you know yeah, about Yeah, the that? cast of Abbott Elementary. Hey, hey, hey. When, when they came on the show, I met them. Uh-huh. Oh, and you met Miss a- Abbott. The- yeah. I've never seen them, but I did. I knew about the, the show and how well it was oh, doing. Yeah. It's a major uh, hit. And yeah. the girl that produced and wrote the show wrote the show about a particular teacher, and What's a particular that? teacher was on the show. Miss uh-huh. Abbott. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know about that? Yeah, it's you know. a really, really good show. Good very show. funny. Very well written. Show. Yeah. So, but you are excited about the new season of Celebrity Family Feud, right? Oh, I'm, I'm beyond excited. <laughs> I'm, you know, Shirley, I'm, I'm overjoyed. I'm not convinced right now. There's I'm a not. tingle. There's a tingle <laughs> that's running through me right now. That's of a electric current mm-hmm. magnification. I just feel call like, a chick. Ooh. That's a yes, call Ooh. the chick. That's what yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Ooh, Lord. One of the many shows that you're on. All right. Well, um, we're going to switch gears here because uh, there's some... Not so good news to report. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Attention, we're we're talking to the prayer warriors now. Uh, We're sending prayers of healing out to Pastor John Gray. Pastor Gray is in the hospital in critical condition right now. His wife, uh, Aventure Gray, posted on Instagram that she is praying for a miracle. And her husband is uh, was admitted into the hospital with a um, saddle pulmonary embolism, which is a rare type of blockage of an artery in the lungs. Uh, Pastor Gray became the pastor of Redemption Church back in 2018 after relocating from Houston, working with Pastor Joel Osteen. So definitely um, prayers of healing. Yeah, I like that brother too, man. Good dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Praying for you, Pastor John Gray. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Show for show. Mm -hmm. Yep. In uh, other sports entertainment news, the WNBA All-Star Weekend spotlights uh, Brittany Griner with special jerseys and continued calls for her freedom. As we all know, Brittany Griner pled guilty uh, last week, but it's not believed she did so because she's actually guilty. In fact, it's believed uh, to be paving the way for potential negotiation negotiations to bring her home via prisoner swap. Griner was accused of having a gram of cannabis oil in her luggage when she was arrested at the airport in Moscow back in February. In addressing the court, Brittany said she didn't intend to commit a crime and was just careless packing her bags. Elizabeth Rood, the Directory Chief of Mission at the U.S. Embassy in Moscow, said the U.S. is doing all it can and delivered a letter to Griner from President Biden, who is promising commitment to get all Americans home from overseas detention. So Let's there you go. go. It's time to bring mm-hmm. her man, home. Man, I hope yes. they let yeah. that girl come home, man. man I do too. Yes. Prisoner of war. Yes. And she had to plead guilty as a looks like because a way the, to yeah swap yeah yeah, yeah. Well, prisoner look, swap and get out yeah. look mm-hmm. they're gonna make you do that mm-hmm. that's what they that's say, the agreement that yeah they gonna make you do that and i'm and i'm fine with that mm-hmm. you know just Go say you guilty get this home, ain't no time man. to be talking about, no i ain't guilty and you stay long i'm guilty i did it boom and then and then bump russia hey i'll be back over there again mm-hmm. oh i ain't go over there no damn way mm-hmm. right yeah mm-hmm. bring her yeah. home Yes. Don't go over there playing yes. no ball no more. No, I ain't going over there doing yeah. nothing. Nope. Never nope. again. Nope. Yeah. Never mm-hmm. see me again. Mm-hmm. 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 And there's a lesson in there as well. She admitted that. She said she was just careless packing her bags. So that's a lesson. Um, and finally, in entertainment news, we got to say congratulations to the father of the bride, the one and only Eddie Murphy. Eddie's 32 year old daughter, Bria, uh, is. And her now husband, Michael Xavier, uh, they got married in front of 250 of their closest friends and family in Beverly Hills during a private ceremony. Of course, Eddie walked the bride down the aisle and the mother of the bride, Nicole Murphy, was there in attendance as well. So congratulations yes. to the Murphy yes, family. Lord. Mm-hmm. And the mother of a bride, she be, she looked too. Yeah. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Yeah. Is this about the mother of the yeah, bride? No, I, I think it is. I, I think to, it to, is. To, to me, uh, it is. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> to me. Oh, 250 guests ain't exactly a private wedding. That's <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
put that out to y'all from somebody who was paid for two of these. That's not good. Oh, it's Eddie Murphy. <laughs> the iconic Eddie Murphy. Oh, it is. It's he looked high. great, too. Congratulations, yeah. Eddie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Send some That's pictures, uh, South Mouth of the South. Send some pictures. My, this of is my, Nicole. Uh, this is my press course. <laughs> of the ball. mother of the bride. <laughs> of the br mother of the bride, yes. She yes. had on a red dress. A red yes, she dress. did. She she did. did. Right from her herself. Was, her hair was pulled back. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Shoulders out. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny Gill performed at the uh -huh. reception. Yeah. Did you see Johnny? I do. Yeah. Uh -huh. I know Johnny. Nicole was there is what we saying. Thank you. <laughs> We know you keep thinking of all these men that's there. That ain't, yeah. that ain't doing this. Because we love Johnny Gill. <laughs> I expect Eddie to be there. Eh, okay, cool. And his speech was good. He thanked everyone uh -huh. for coming. He's very happy and very proud of his daughter. Mm. It was and he nice. looked great. Eddie he looked did. Great. Eddie looked he good. Looked great. What yes, did Nicole did. say? <laughs> Call it, was, oh, it was amazing, Tommy. Nicole doesn't talk at the wedding. She talks at the uh, 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 dinner. Reception. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. What I'm at the reception these. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Again, congratulations to the Murphy family. Yes. Uh, many happy years to Bria and her new husband, Michael. All right. Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, uh, vacation breakup. We'll talk about that right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. So this was a question, guys, from Facebook. It says, hey, Steve, Tommy Jr., my homeboy took his girlfriend on vacation because they were beefing and thought they needed a getaway. They both were tripping and still arguing, so while on vacation, they decided to break up on the last day there. The flight home was tough, but they said, ultimately, it's for the best. Man, I'd be mad if I had to spend three grand to figure out we needed to break up. <laughs> so here's the question. Here's the question for you guys. What? Here's a question. Did you ever break up on your vacation with your boo or, or did you stay and fly home early if you did? That's the question. I yes, I actually out. did on a I cruise knew it. ship. I, knew it. I, I did. did it. I knew you it. broke up on a damn cruise ship. Yes. What happened? What happened? It all just came to a rocky end. It was bad. It was, I don't know how we stayed in that cabin two extra days. It was just bad. And by the time we docked, matter of fact, call it dock back in New Orleans. Man, let me mm. tell you something. I was broke, didn't have no money, but I was through with her. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, did, were you guys having problems before you went on the cruise like this guy? And so you thought the cruise might, you know, we was having problems get away might we, make it better? Before we met, seemed like we was having problems. Now, yeah. Uh, I don't want to talk about this. This is like some back well, you brought it up. <laughs> raggedy memory you, lane. Right you, asked, <laughs> you brought it what up. What you got, Junior? <laughs> no, I ain't never did nothing like that. First of all, the only beef I'm eating is on the plane. You can't be beefing before we go. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> no, uh -uh, I ain't never did nothing like this. Right. Well, hey, great. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Come uh -oh. on, Steve. I know well, you have I'm a here to tell you that I've gone on several vacations. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And, uh... Wanted to break up before the vacation. <laughs> wanted to break up on the vacation. Stayed and went on some more vacation. Uh -huh. uh, till finally, he's talking about he would be mad if he spent three thousand. Uh -huh. I've lost millions. <laughs> millions. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> In bad vacations and breakups. So, no, son, sometimes you try to save it. You try to go out there and, you know, maybe yeah. this, we get some time away alone. Mm -hmm. But that's the best way to find out if you really belong with somebody. Go somewhere where there's no distractions. It's just you and him. Marjorie yeah. and I have a running joke. We knew we were meant to be each other when we went to Bora Bora. Because mm. Bora Bora has nothing to do. <laughs> it's boring. <laughs> Bora, Bora oh is a Latin word that means boring, boring. <laughs> and boy, let me tell you something. That's a good way to find out if you belong to think. If you can pay three thousand to get out and learn that information, money well spent. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No lesson mm. like right. a boat lesson. Yeah. Uh huh. All right. Coming up next, uh, 34 after the hour, Steve is going to tell us about his fabulous Paris vacation. We can't wait. That's coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
All right, we got to talk about it. Steve is back from Paris. We've been seeing social media, all the fashions, everything, Steve. Uh, we know why they call you Blue Cheese, but uh, <laughs> let the people know why they call you Blue Cheese. And then you got to share with us some of your favorite moments and your looks from Paris Fashion Week. Uh, Blue was, Cheese. You know, um, it's sort of crazy because um, we didn't go to but one show. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Marjorie didn't feel like going to the shows. And oh. so we was just over there just really enjoying place she only went to the Fendi show the Fendi uh -huh. Fendi show yeah we uh -huh. saw that that was fine how uh -huh. long do a show last dog I never ever about 15 minutes dog you, you take you out and get dressed then you got to cut through all that traffic then you go through the paparazzi line you sit down the show is about 15 minutes wow seriously a fashion wow. show is wow. about 15 minutes 20 tops so I've never Steve, seen one longer than twenty. Yeah, all the looks and the when you all were coming out the hotel doors and all of that, I, we thought you were going to the shows. You were just going where to dinner? No, we go or to what? dinner. We're going out, hanging out, kicking dinner. it. Out, <laughs> out. You know, I thought you were going you, to. The I, I'll be fly just to be fly. You know what I'm saying? I, I love it, baby. I love it. You know, I don't need a reason. You know what I mean? I just need to be the season. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, you got me sitting me and you act like you don't even know how this go. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't just been there all my life. You know, that's just amazing to me, though, how they just now catching on. You know what I'm saying? I've yeah. been uh, flying my whole damn life. You know, I, I know they ain't like the way I was flying. You know, I was urban. You know what I'm saying? Out Detroit, Philly, St. Louis, you know, Chicago, you know. Mm -hmm. Up in there, you know, Evergreen, you know what I mean? Representing not, the boys. Not Evergreen. Oh, Did you say Evergreen? Evergreen? Chicago? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Evergreen. I just represent, you know what I mean? I was, I was representing Detroit, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I was that dude, I was, I was at the, you know, City Snickers and Broadway, you know, yes, just some Walters out there, Jacks, you know, just out there just doing me, you know what I'm saying? Boyd's up in Philly, just coming out of there with, the, with it on, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And then, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, cause I, you know, got with this little dude, Ellie, little French ass boy, you know, and now all of a sudden, you know, all of a sudden, you know, he, 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 he want to start taking pictures and posting and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But you know, it's probably, probably my last posting trip. I don't like pictures, what? you know what I'm saying? Blue cheese, you don't like What? Pictures. Yeah, you know, I ain't really be feeling it, you know, cause every time I get dressed, I be ready to step out. He come talking about Mr. Harvey, Mr. Harvey, it's time for pictures. No, it ain't, it's time for them to just see me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you need a picture, I need some fresh air. You know what I mean? <laughs> we saw the paparazzi though, we saw them taking I mean, you know, it was a, but uh, like coming out of our hotel, a lot of times most of the crowds was waiting on uh this young girl selena gomez was staying there oh, and her okay. fans uh -huh. was out there got uh -huh. you okay. you know they yeah. was glad to see me but not ask what they wanted <laughs> <laughs> you know, they wanted selena gomez all them kids was outside just like you couldn't come out to the hotel a mm -hmm. couple really? of times and then you know when we went to the show mm -hmm. that's a different thing the paparazzi and the fans they lined up Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Steve, Mr. Harvey, Mr. Steve, Mr. Marjorie, Marjorie, Steve, Marjorie. You know, you just keep that. walking, you know, because half them people, you don't even know their publication just go on walk. Mm -hmm. Any other and, stars you know, over there? Yeah, with some stars over there. I didn't really see, uh, you know, we... Because um, you didn't go. At Fashion Week, the stars is the people. Like, you know, we had lunch with a couple of models that knew my uh, family and stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know... Um, the new uh, girl from uh, the Sudan, uh, Onk O'Connor, Oak, whatever her name is. She's the top model right now. Mm -hmm. The girl from Sudan, beautiful little girl. Oh, we took okay. her to lunch. Uh, Marjorie adopted her, made her family. So now, mm -hmm. what else does it cost? Uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> inside boys, you know, outside boys. Well, we need to stop adopting all these. Steve, damn tell people. us your well, favorite man. thing that you ate over there quickly, please. Uh, I don't know, man. Caesar's was incredible, man, because they cooked this dish in a cheese bowl, a big bowl made out of hardened old age cheese. And they put cognac in it, set it on fire, and then they mm -hmm. stir the noodles inside the, the cheese that come off the cognac. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. I'm going to make that tonight. No, you're not okay. sure. I'm going to burn your house For down. dinner? Yes. Burn your house down. Pray. Tell Nesto call us for prayer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up next, it is the nephew with today's prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today, and the subject is, she's too phony and bony. Now, Mm. (laughs) we'll figure out, find out what that means in just a few, because right now the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Nev? Well, Mm -hmm. looking through my stupid archives, Mm. folder one, folder 12 of stupid, uh-huh. What'd you come oh, up yeah. with? What'd you get? Yeah. You can Fold really just sweat. pick any folder. You don't have to keep flipping through. <laughs> <laughs> They're all stupid. <laughs> uh, let me see. Right here. Curry goat. How about that? Curry oh. goat. Okay. Yes. All right. I've never had that. I'm in Miami right now. I'm over here with a bunch of Jamaicans and people from the islands, okay? Curry goat. How about that? Boy, yeah. Boy, 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 boy. Yeah. Let's go. Hello? Yeah. I'm trying to reach a, um, a Mr. Is this Mr. Yeah, this a This is Benjamin Dixon. Trevor is my son. He goes to school with your son, now. Yeah. He, uh, he went to a birthday party that your son had last weekend. Am I right? Yeah. Well, listen, I understand. You're right. Uh, listen, I have a problem with you, Mr. Because I understand that you all are, are Jamaican and from Jamaica. But listen, you guys serve the children curry goat. You don't serve kids curry goat. Everybody's child doesn't eat curry goat. Pete, what happened to what happened to ice cream and cake and punch and maybe even a pizza at a birthday party for kids? But curry goat? That's out of the oh, question. Oh, you oh you mean? I mean, I understand what you're talking about. Oh, you mean, oh, you mean, I mean, feed the kids them curry goats. I feed them anything. But what, what, what you're talking about, brethren? Say so what? What, what, what you're talking about? Oh, you mean, oh, you mean you have a problem with me? Oh, you have a problem with me? I got and a problem. Have... I got a problem with any parents who, who decides that on their own that in, uh, somebody else's child, it's okay to feed them some curry goat. My child don't eat no goat. We eat chicken. We eat steak. We eat cow. We don't eat curry goat. Yo, him eat it at a birthday party, though. Eh? Him, him eat it at a birthday party. And why you, man? If you would have told me that give you some, too. So, so rude boy, no call me with your, with your anger and a, 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 a go on and a, and a rumble for me, you know, brethren. Because you don't know who you deal with, you know. Okay, I need you to slow it down for me, man. I ain't understanding nothing you're saying. You can't, you can't tell me for slow it down. You call me, I don't go So you can't tell me for slow it down. On my phone, you're calling up. Look, man, all I'm saying is, you, you, this, this is disrespectful to the child, to people's parents. You're going out on your own liberty deciding on what you're going to feed somebody. You got to feed them normal stuff. You can't do that. Kids, no. uh, at, at, at birthday parties here in the States, man, it's no. pizza, it's ice cream, it's cake, it's punch. That's no. it. Hot dogs, maybe. No. But no. not no damn curry goat. man. I'm here running the show, brethren. Don't tell me what to do, eh? I me run this. So y'all come tell me both, both, both disrespect. You disrespect me, I call my phone. I, I'm not disrespecting you by calling your phone. I want to know why it is you doing something like this. And I bet you these other parents don't know you've been serving go. Yo, kiss man. Who, who, who the you is? Eh? You, you want to meet me? I'm sure you who got a van father is. Eh? How come tell me no bull Eh? Oh, you okay, want, oh, no. oh, you want to. Who, who, who you, brethren? Who the hell is you? Eh? I don't know you from Adam, brethren. I come talk on my phone and call with it. Yo, yo, you, you, you know, you know who the f*** can deal with? Eh, eh, eh. You know some of man just bring up now, you know? Oh, you, you, you want to meet me somewhere? Is that what you want to do? Me meet you. Me, me, brethren. Me meet you right now. You understand me? Me, me brethren. You don't know who you're dealing with, you know? You're gonna make me hurt you, man. If I if if I come over there, you're gonna make me hurt you. You hear me? Then I mean this, man. Now no. I, I, I call you because I'm a concerned parent about my child, uh, 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 and, and then you got a nerve to, hit, to tell me you're the one that's in the wrong. Yo, man, me not hell, me not in the wrong, brethren. Me not in the wrong. You understand me? So don't come tell me, be the big man, you know. Don't come tell me about me not in the wrong. You and the wrong to call my phone. Yo, just tell me where you're there now, and me come meet you, and me I'll feed you some curry goat, you and your family, and yo, and you can't just leave me alone. You ain't finna.
to feed my family. No, you don't bring my family in this, man. You don't bring me, but you don't bring my wife and my kids into nothing. You hear me? If you want to kill your auntie and mama, put everybody grandma. So how come tell me I got, I, I got one. You know what, man? I'm going to tell you. I'm, I got something I want to tell you. You listening? This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your sister Patsy. What the hell? I don't believe you, man. I don't know no d- like that. <laughs> you, you, hey, hey, you just got pranked by your sister Patsy, man. She, she put me up to this, dog. Boy, I tell you, man, I'm so sweat, boy. I'm like I need to get a blood pressure check. <laughs> I got a low, I got a low tolerance. My tolerance very low. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, man. But anyway, I'm gonna still feed you and your family some curry goat, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna invite you to the house. I'm gonna have nothing but curry goat. I bet it's I good too. I ain't gonna too. give you. I ain't gonna have no rice with it or nothing. Just pure curry goat. You know when you get angry. American people really can't understand what you're saying. You went on, you went on a Jamaican run. <laughs> They're like, what the hell that boy saying? <laughs> we gotta give a shout out to all of the Jamaicans out there, baby. Boom, 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 boom. What is the baddest radio show in the land? Steve Harvey Morning Show, <laughs> New York City, baby. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Got his Jerk blood chicken pressure. now with some rice and peas. There you go. Oh, yeah, it's a plan. You gotta have the rice and peas yeah, if you're gonna do it. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Get in line and get ready for some stupid. It's coming to Wilmington, Delaware this weekend. That's right, at the Grand. And I will be there acting a doggone fool. All right, it's been a long time coming. This this show was actually supposed to be before the pandemic ever started. Got pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. Now it's finally happening. This Saturday, July 16th, the nephew coming to Wilmington, Delaware. Okay? Tickets on sale mm. right now. Yeah. That's where the it's president is from. President Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell Biden to come on down there. Get the show or two. <laughs> Don't you come down to my show and fall a damn sleep, though. You're going to sit and watch my damn show. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be a good look for you. <laughs> yeah. That means I'm not doing my job, okay? <laughs> Come on out if you're in Wilmington, Delaware, anybody around the way, which is Philly. Come on down and catch your boy. The nephew will be there this Saturday night, all right? Tickets on sale right now. All right. Wilmington. Was I I stupid enough for y'all? You going to have some curry goat at the show? No, I'm not going to do no curry goat, (laughs) sir. No, I'm going to miss you on that. I don't, I don't, I never really wanted the curry goat part. I'm good with the jerk chicken. You don't like curry goat? No, never no, had no, it. Oh, man. I never had it. Listen, see? it dogs oh, outstanding. Really? Dog. What, does it taste like chicken? What does it taste? Surely, like? no, it don't taste like no damn chicken. <laughs> Quit asking non-cooking questions. <laughs> what does it the taste like? The hell, a like? goat gonna taste like a chicken? <laughs> How does a you ever seen them walking like next to each other? What? <laughs> rabbits <laughs> taste like chicken, don't they? Who told they you that, never... Shirley? Everybody who's had rabbit. Okay, why don't you try it? It don't. No, rabbit tastes like rabbit. I didn't have rabbit. Rabbit's outstanding. Yeah, I've, I've heard rabbit. people who've had it, they say it tastes like chicken. Surely. All right, oh, we'll continue this Shirley, debate. Why are you in food conversation? <laughs> <laughs> For real. I, mean, it's I, not can, what I you like do. to eat. Wait a minute. I can't eat now. Well, know your flavors. <laughs> <laughs> know your animals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up next, Strawberry Letter subject today is She's Too Phony and Bony Now. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, it is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit. Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. 
Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the strawberry letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, she's too phony and bony now. Dear Stephen Shirley, I've been married for four years to the love of my life. When we met, she had just had a handsome baby boy, and we bonded over us being heart- both being heartbroken. I was engaged to a self-centered woman before I met my wife, and two weeks before our wedding, she ghosted me. My wife had been dating a man for a long time, and when she got pregnant, he ghosted her. We were two damaged friends that became lovers. I have raised her son as my own and loved her through her weight challenges. I know she was bigger when we met because she was she just had a baby. Uh, I knew she was bigger because she just had a baby. When she was still overweight a year later, we started eating healthier and I encouraged her to lose weight. We got a trainer and she went and got a breast reduction. When the weight came off, she got a lot of new clothes and she let her hair grow and she got a perm. It was like her attitude changed overnight and she was very uppity all of a sudden. I suggested she ease up on working out because she lost all of her curves. She started hanging out with her trainer and the trainer's friends who are all skinny, single, airheads that drink a lot and like to be in the streets. My wife started wearing emerald contacts and she wants some kind of cosmetic procedure on her chin. Our son will be five in two months and she wants to rent a venue for his party because she said my house is not adequate enough. She puts her tiny little butt in lingerie before sex and her moan sounds so phony like we're in a porno. I can't keep up with the new woman she has become and I hope she doesn't tell me that I'm not enough for her. How do I get my juicy down to earth wife back. Well, honestly, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think you're going to get her back. I I think, and and the problem is you're afraid that you can't keep up with this new woman. She, uh, she has become, and I think she's gone for good. And you just basically told us why, because she's changed on the outside. You said she got a breast reduction. She lost all her curves. She's wearing emerald contacts now, but I, I really think it's the inside change that's bothering you the most because she has new friends. Now she hangs out with her trainer and his people. They like to drink and, and they're from the street you say. And although you were very supportive in the beginning, um, you know, about her weight loss and, and all of that, getting a trainer and all of that, eating healthier, that broken girl that you bonded with a few years back, um, that girl is no longer interested in being a good wife, it seems. She's trying to live her best life right now after conquering her weight issues. And, and this is who she really is. You you need to get used to this. This is who this person really is. She's skinny now, all of that. She, she you know, she, she got her priorities mixed up. They're all out of order now because she's trying to find herself and she's losing you. I mean, doesn't she realize that she could have it both? She could have a good family, a good marriage. She could have a good life and she could still have a good toned body. And all of a sudden, your house isn't good enough for for a five-year-old's birthday party. I mean, the five-year-old doesn't care about that. He just wants to party with his little friends. Uh, I I say you got to talk to her. It might be too late, but, you know you got to try to reason with her because I think it's not over until it's over. I mean, I can't speak on her fake moaning because if she is faking it, that may be the real reason she's checked out. I mean, that's what's got you so scared. you got to try and sit down and figure this whole situation out with her. But I, I do think part of her is gone for good. You'll never get that back. Steve? Okay, look, you all bonded out of uh, mutual hurt. I, but I think the relationship started in a genuine fashion, seems like. Uh, now, when you all had this baby and she was still overweight a year later. Now, let's talk about this for a second. That's that baby weight, man. It's hard to get rid of. It really, really is. I hear a lot of women talk about the struggles of baby weight. And you got to understand that uh, there are women that's dealing with baby weight 13 years afterwards. I mean, you know. And who am I? Who am I to say that? Should have gotten rid of it by now because I look at my stomach and I think I should have gotten rid of it by now. But um, it don't go away like I wanted to. So this it's a weight Mm -hmm. issue. This whole thing is about weight and attitude. This whole thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Y'all started eating healthier and you encouraged her to lose weight. She got a trainer. 
She went and got a breast reduction. So she just started taking everything down. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take this weight down. I'm going to get rid of these breasts. You know, all this here. The weight came off. She bought a lot of new clothes. She let her hair grow, and she got a perm. Now, I'm just really basing on these new changes that you're telling me. I just want to deal with what was it we was dealing with originally. <laughs> Here you go. Because <laughs> you done cut damn near everything. So I just makes me, when the weight, she got a breast reduction. Yeah. When the weight came off, she got a lot of new clothes, and she let her hair grow and got a perm. Lord Jesus, what was going on? (laughs) Before. So, (laughs) before the breast reduction, before the weight loss, before she grew her hair, and before the perm, and before the emerald eye contacts, Lord Jesus, who was you staying with? Don't forget the emerald context. I said All right. that just now. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> when we come back, we'll have part two of Steve's response at 23 minutes after the hour. You definitely don't want to miss it. Today's Strawberry Letter subject is she's too phony and bony now. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. The subject is, she's too phony and bony now. Well, this was a letter about a man and woman who met who had had mutual pain, but they were there for each other. And both of them got ghosted. Uh, One after she got pregnant, the other one, the guy got ghosted two weeks before his wedding. They met each other. They were friends. They two damaged friends that became lovers was his description. Uh, you've raised a son like your own. You've loved her through her weight challenges. Now, you said in the letter, I knew she was bigger when we met because she just had a baby. When she was still overweight a year later, then y'all started eating healthy and you encouraged her to lose her weight. I'm assuming we started because you was kind of, you know, big boy yourself a little bit. Then got a trainer. When Now, here was the problem I have. To do. I'm listening to everything she's done. And I want to just see what we what were we dealing with before all this. So these is the changes. She got a trainer and got a breast reduction. So that's the first thing she got. Because then you said when the weight came off, she got rid of new clothes. So she got the breast reduction done first. That was probably so she could do the workouts. What? I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Based <laughs> on this letter right here. If I was what? an ignorant person reading this letter... <laughs> And I do have a tendency to be ignorant at times. Oh, yes, really? You do. Check. She was overweight a year later. We started eating healthy. Got, we got a trainer. She went and got a breast reduction. I'm assuming that these exercises with, without the breast reduction was a bit much. She was getting hit in the mouth a lot. You know, maybe anyway, even. Maybe I could even not with you. Did, <laughs> jumped and knocked herself out. You know, uh, couldn't, couldn't see the flow. You know, doing the little ladder drills on the floor and couldn't see the flow because the breast oh, was in the way. I don't know what. But to do these exercises, she had to get this breast reduction. Then when the weight here. come off, she got a lot of clothes. Mm-hmm. Then she let her hair grow and got a perm. So before this, it wasn't no hair and it wasn't no perm. I'm just basing this on that. Then her attitude changed and uh-huh. she started, oh, Wearing emerald contacts. You got to be careful with the emerald contact because they got uh-huh. to match your skin tone. You uh-huh. just can't want green eyes and be any shade now. It, some of this with borderline scary now. You know, we looking like children of the corn and stuff like this now. You, you know, like really, really fair complexed people can't get emerald eyes. And real dark people can't get emerald eyes. You can't go in the extreme. You got to be somewhere in the middle. You got to be like a different color to get emerald eyes. Then you said she wanted some kind of cosmetic surgery on her chin. Well, her chin was probably damaged from her breast. You know, a lot of this goes hand in hand in this letter right here. I'm not going to be able to help this couple out. I can see that right now. Obviously not. So let's just find the joy out of this letter. 
Because after this <laughs> breast reduction, now she, for the first time, she's seeing her chin. Now she got to get something done because them breasts was all up under her throat. Then she had her cleavage started. Her cleavage was so big, some people thought she had a cleft in her chin. It was actually her breast. So now once she got that cleavage reduced, she found out it wasn't a cleft in her chin. Uh-huh. Then the sun going to be five in two months, and she want to rent a venue because the house ain't adequate enough for the five-year-old party because she want to flex in front of her little skinny-ass uh, uh, friends Trainer. and trainer friends. Uh, then uh, then she puts on little tiny butt in lingerie before sex, and her moan sounds so phony like we in a porno. And you just can't keep up with this woman she become. I hope she don't tell me that I'm not enough for her. How do I get my juicy, down-to-earth wife back? She could be gone with all this chin work, weight <laughs> reduction, and then took the breasts off. You just can't go packing that back home. But we're going to have to start, though. The only way we're going to get Big Juicy back is we got to start with food. we got to get these calories up. This I can help you with. I can't help you with losing weight, but I can show know how to pack it up. Bread. Bread is very important. And not just bread alone, but you got to put something on the bread. It's got to be what? butter or jam, stuff like that. You got, can't don't, don't just eat the bread by itself, because we got to get Big Juicy back. That's what you want. You want Big Juicy down the earth. And she was down the earth because she couldn't get off the earth. You understand? So big people is going to be more grounded because they are very rarely ever airborne. So there you're going to have these moments like this here. So to get Big Juicy back, we got to start with bread. We need to go to the grocery store and buy that big bag of potatoes, the one you ain't bought in a while. That's paper, but it's got the little mesh on the front so you can see uh-huh. that they is potatoes. Uh-huh. And then you need to go down there at the bottom row. They are The down. bottom row of that aisle and get that big ass bag of rice, the one that 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 you can't hold in one hand. Yeah, we need yeah, It's on the bottom row. It's the big bags is on the bottom row. All right. All right, Especially listen. When she get that she get that chin done. She done. You ain't going to be able to talk to her. I'm telling you. Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey on Instagram and Facebook. Check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, we got Sports Talk with Junior right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. Junior, what you got this morning? Okay, Shirley. Uh, Brittany Griner, we all know she pleaded guilty. Uh, we talked about this earlier, but her coach, mm-hmm. her coach for the Mercury, uh, Phoenix Mercury, she said her name is Vanessa Nygaard. She says Brittany would already be home if she was a famous male athlete. And she brought up Tom Brady. And he said it would be a question because Tom Brady would be home by now. And she's facts. saying that basically, she, she's basing it on the on the on the fact that Tom Brady would not have to play in Russia to supplement his income. Talking mm. about the disparages oh. between oh, WNBA players and male, male players that are getting paid the money they're getting paid. So they go if you play in the WNBA, you can earn anywhere from two hundred fifty thousand to mm. half a million. Mm-hmm. Well, they go overseas and play in places like Russia, Turkey, and Spain, mm-hmm. where they get a million to oh. play basketball. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, so, we need we need to get her home uh, yeah. first. I understand this other platform that everybody want to take True. advantage of and all this here, but you got to find a way to bring this girl home. Mm-hmm. You know, we talk about the rest. So yeah, it ain't we, just yeah. if it's Tom Brady. You know, if she wasn't a woman, if she wasn't black, a whole lot of things could be different. But, but this is the speak- world we in. Yeah. Right. And so yeah, we got to focus, to- speak to I what, Shirley? You. No, I'm saying it does speak to the question that a lot of people were asking. Well, what was she doing over there in the first place? You know, a lot of people were asking that. So mm-hmm. that Playing speaks ball. to that. So she was yeah. over Not there. Not knowing she to, was working and playing Yeah, ball. to make yeah. money yes. so she could yeah. supplement her income. Yeah. Right, right. And, and you know, that's that, that does speak to it. But like I said, though, you do have to get her home first. We can address a lot right. of this stuff when we get her back, you know. And, yeah, we and know it, there's a disparity in the pay. We know there's a disparity in the attendance of the game. We understand that. Now, the mm-hmm. soccer players that went out there and fought, you know, the mm-hmm. NBA's got, they got, the WNBA has got to do better. Their sponsorship that they're getting, all them teams got some type of sponsors, and, you know, mm-hmm. you got sponsorship has to pay more. 
you know, you, they they wearing all these jerseys with these names on it and all this here, and they play in the same arenas and everything. The more of those sponsorship dollars have to go to those women. Junior, do what's happening with KD? Because I ain't oh, seen uh, no that was sports. next, man. That's what I'm about to tell you. Kevin Durant, man, wants out of Phoenix, and I don't know is it because of Kyrie Irving, but he don't he want to play. He want out of Brooklyn. Phoenix? Brooklyn. I mean, excuse he me. He want out of Brooklyn. He want out of Brooklyn, but he's going. He wants to go to Phoenix. Is what I'm saying. Oh, he want to go to Phoenix, but he want out of Brooklyn for sure. And he's just saying Phoenix not being aggressive enough coming to get him to get him out of Brooklyn because he's not doing another year where he playing ball by himself. And Kyrie, we don't know what his next call is going to be. That's what Kyrie, <laughs> that's what it. Kevin Durant is it. going through. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing another season I with this. Get it. You're having your own practice. You ain't practicing with the team. I want out. That's it. I want out. Okay. All right. Phoenix Thank you, nice. Junior. That'd be a nice move. Yeah. Okay. I'll right. see him in Phoenix. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll check Steve's voicemail right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now to check Steve's voicemail. And if you want to leave a message for Steve, all you have to do is call him 877-29-STEVE, 877-29-STEVE. Here we go. This caller, Steve's name is Ron. He says you can be the most powerful man in America. Yes, Steve, this is Ron, the guy that just called you that was urging you to run for president. Just give me a call back and just express an interest that you would like to even talk about it. I'll build your website, put your policy on there. I'll send it to you. You check it out. You tell me, mister. I know you don't feel like you know enough probably to be president, but you can learn that. But what you got is you got the to be president. Been working in politics professionally a long time Steve and show you what to do bro I got the master plan for you brother just give me a call we're not doing yeah, that I appreciate what? all of that here's wow. a problem with politics I don't like them mm-hmm. and I don't like the people in it and I don't <laughs> like asking nobody to pass my bill and then they don't and then I don't like a group of people sitting over there just cause that's what the group say that's what everybody say I don't like that mm-hmm. I'm not a good debater I don't do well in debates I'm not going to be a good, uh, and I'm not really sure y'all want me speaking on behalf of the country because I'm going to loosen all this stuff that I see wrong, you know. Well, that's why he wants he you to He said, yeah, you can, you can learn. He said, yeah. you, they'll teach you that. Yeah. And what's your policy? I'm, I'm, I'm bringing your all website. the troops home. Mm-hmm. I ain't helping nobody else fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. First of all, we ain't doing that no more, you know. <laughs> now, if you talking about coming over here, then we'll meet y'all over there. We'll start bugging then. But we're just we're over there, you know, talking and all this here, soldiers getting shot. No, uh-uh. No. Uh, if you do something to our troops, what I'm finna do back to you, you ain't gonna like. Because mm. I'm, mm. I'm gonna do extreme stuff. You hurt six of our men, 6,000 of yours finna pay. That's all I gotta okay. say. We can do tit for tat. <laughs> so, no, nah, okay. Ready. So, nah. no. And yeah, foreign like- policy. I'm going to tell all Americans what we're doing with all foreign policy because that's something we as Americans are not privileged to hear is foreign policy. And I'm going to tell them all of what the foreign policy is and I'm going to have them voting on it and stuff like that. And uh, I'm just not going to be a good uh, politician at all. No. And then I'm going to tell them <laughs> folks what I really think about them. It's we need that. It's going to be a bunch of name calling. And then I'm going to win that right there, though. When it gets uh, to the name you calling. Will. You will. Oh, I'm going to watch this here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Ron. We, we can mm-hmm. keep no. it at the White House. And I'm not moving it. in there because I'm going <laughs> to stay in my crib. That's the other thing. I'm not moving up there. <laughs> I've been right. in there. I don't like all them dead people on the wall. I feel <laughs> it just, I'm very uncomfortable walking with all these dead white people on this wall, man. I, I, I don't have enough respect for them and all this. Walking past Thomas Jefferson, I don't really know if he had no slaves or not. I ain't like nobody on them walls, really. Yeah, see, I don't all like right. nobody. On. Yeah, see, Moving hey, on to Marvin, to the truck driver, Steve. Hi, uh, Steve. My name is Marvin Johnson. I'm a uh, truck driver. I just want to let you know, I've been hating you since 1997 when you didn't sign my autograph. But I've been listening to your show for like the last two years, and you changed my life with a lot of things you say. So I don't hate you no more. Actually, you changed my life with your wisdom, and uh, I thank you, and uh, I appreciate you, man. 
keep on with your shit bad stuff and your bald ass head just like me. So I just want to say thank you. Mm. Wow. Well, Marvin, you know, this mm. response is mm. going to be a little difficult for me to make, and I only have 30 seconds to make it. Uh, let's first, let's deal with the part about you hated me. Uh, I never yes. knew that, Marvin, so it didn't mean a damn to me. Uh, so I'm glad you hated me and didn't tell me. Uh, I'm also glad that you got to know me a little bit better from the inside. I'd like to apologize for not signing your autograph, but maybe I ain't want to that damn day. And so that's all to it. We grown that's ass men. Let's just move on. Can I buy your autograph? We changing lives now, Mom. He's I appreciate hate you, you. Again. Stay safe out there on that road, brother. And I got love for you too with your bald headed ass. <laughs> we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show at 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, we have one more phone call for you. Uh, this one's from France. Oh, okay. Uh-oh. Hi. So we, so we are in Paris, France right now, and we just saw Steve Harvey, and I was kind of just sitting, I, I'm like a little girl, and I was just staring there in awe at, at, at his beautiful face. He was with his bodyguard, and, and he was in this, like, brown sweater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, with yeah. a sweater, and it was the, it's the best day of my life right now because it's my childhood idol. I love you so much, Steve. Love, 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 love from Tessie. <laughs> that was wow. overload okay. right there. Wow, that's wow. really cool. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, young lady. Uh, oh. I know that because I only wore one sweater, I remember. Uh, the bodyguard was, mm-mm, no. I know they boom. wasn't thinking Ellie was a bodyguard oh. in Paris. <laughs> I was thinking, I boom. <laughs> no, bodyguard yeah, in Paris, bodyguard. Shirley. <laughs> I might have been with my boy Kevin. Mm-hmm. Or I could have been with uh, I had a business meeting over there, but yeah, probably probably was with Kevin. Oh, well, they yeah, really saw you, Kevin Jake, was over they, there. Yeah, yeah but congratulations. It. Hey, and I want to send out to the truck driver to call in. Much respect to Marvin Johnson. You know why I respect Marvin? Because he left his whole name. Oh, uh huh. He was Not man scared. enough about uh-huh. it. I like yeah. that man and the Marvin Johnson. I got love for you from now on, dog. Appreciate you. All right. All right. Coming up at 33 minutes after the hour, we'll play a round of Would You Rather with the guys right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather be reincarnated as an animal or as a human again? Come back as no damn animal. (laughs) But if you came back as an animal... Oh, just outside all the damn time, no, walking around. No. Gotta find something to eat. Yeah, I ain't got no money. <laughs> okay. I ain't coming back it. in here. Ain't got no money. I ain't done that before. <laughs> That's the first part of your life. Yeah, huh? yeah uh, 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 I was. I already been an animal. <laughs> yeah, we ain't doing that no damn more. Not with no money. Uh, uh-uh, uh, no lord. I don't want no parts of that. I want to be involved in currency exchange. Uh-huh. At some point. I'm, Hope somebody set a bowl of milk out. Man, hell. Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay. Moving on. Would you rather not speak for an entire year or would you rather not hear for an entire year? If I can't hear, then am I speaking? I don't get it. Eh? I'm going to tell you right would now. You rather if if you can't hear, hear you sure going to sound stupid. Yeah. <laughs> especially you, especially you talk. used to hear. You know, I, I have trouble pronouncing words, and I can hear them. Boy, if I can't hear you, can hear. Yeah. Going, what is his ass talking about? <laughs> I think I'd want to hear. Okay, so you rather... Well, you can uh, type, write, but mm-hmm. if you can't hear, nah, man, I can't. That's but tough. not talking for a year, whoo Mm-hmm. That's a lot of writing, dog. Oh, I can't tell you. The, <laughs> a lot of that's writing. A lot of writing, dog. That's Ooh, a lot of text. I can't tell you the money I'm going to be missing out on. I can't talk. Yeah, because yeah, that's, that's what that's you true. do you for a living. Yeah. You're going to write these sets and hold them up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of text cussing. A lot of text mm-hmm. cussing going mm-hmm. on. Right there. All right, guys. Would you rather climb the highest mountain B. or B. swim B. the deepest B. sea? Oh, mm-hmm. man. Why do you? Uh-huh. Back up on that mountain. I'm gonna die in that water. That's for damn. I can't get in that water, man. 
<laughs> but I but I can't handle heights because oh, of my out. I get altitude sickness. Yeah. Uh, so what you gonna do? So we gonna down the way up or down the way down? Either way, we gonna <laughs> dead. Like like Mount Everest. Everest when I see door. Everest, yeah. I'm not I'm not finna do that, dog. Okay. That don't make no sense. I don't even want mm-hmm. up there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't even. No, it would mean so, nothing for me to stick a flag in the top of every nothing. So then, <laughs> so then you're going to the deepest seas. Yeah, but I can't swim, so hell. I can swim, we, but I ain't going way down there. No. All right, that's today's round of Would You Rather. <laughs> Coming yeah, back. We didn't so like serious. today. I know. We didn't like today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up at 49 minutes after the hour, last break of the day, and uh, Steve Harvey will close out the show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time now for um, the last break of the day. That's where we are. And, of course, on the last break, it's been a good Tuesday. On the last break, um, we let Steve close out the show with his remarks. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Steve. You know what? um, I just want to say something encouraging to people because uh, so many people out there, you know, I look at Instagram and I watch people and I listen to people and I get so many calls now and so many texts and and so many things. I run up into people and say, Hey man, we really look up to you. Uh, Just yesterday I got off a plane and a young man said, sir, excuse me. I just want you to know we look up to you. Thank you, man, for saying some of the things you say. And uh, that, you know, that, that really mattered to me. And as I've gotten older, I've started to understand more and more my position and my mission in life. And part of it is to be encouraging and informative for those that still trying to find their way. Because I know what it's like to not know your way. I know what it's like to feel the frustration of wanting something to happen and nothing seems to happen. But all those times that I felt like nothing was seeming to be happening, it was actually going down at that very moment. It actually was. It just takes experience, time, and age to look back on it and see exactly what was happening to you was in preparation of what was going to happen to you later on. And so it be- it became uh, imperative that you understood that the things that happen in your past are in direct correlation with where you want it to be today. And I wanted to do these closing remarks to encourage people that there is a process that all of us are in, a process. And I have to remind myself of that oftentimes also. How many times have I set a goal for myself without asking God to give me the proper guidance in that goal and direction. Because when I ask God for something, he usually does it in a way that I didn't even see how or I didn't even think of. I'll give you an example. I put something on my vision board about mm, six years ago, maybe. And was involving a uh, franchise. I'll just leave it at that. And that's what I said, man, I'd love to have a franchise like this. I'd love to have a few of these. Well, that was my goal, and I put it on my vision board. Years later, I actually ended up doing a benefit for the franchise. Then I actually formed a relationship with the guy that owns the franchise, and I started using some of his facilities to do something else that God had wanted me to do that I didn't know. I'm being very vague because I just don't want to give up the story, the name, but just understand what I'm saying. All I wanted was a franchise. What God intended for me to be was something different. And so then eventually I ended up owning something of the franchise, but it wasn't a franchise. It's the craziest thing. Now, all of this happened Because later on in life, I stopped worrying about what I wanted and I started asking God to show me what he wanted from me. And even though I was in the right direction, I wasn't thinking big enough. 
And what God ended up giving me was far bigger than what I had wanted. The lesson I learned is the lesson I'm trying to tell you about today. You can have your dreams and aspirations as you should, but open yourself up to the will of God so you can see what God got for you. Because I am telling you, man, you can't outplan God. You can't outthink him, and you sure can't outdo him. So while you're on Instagram flexing and, and, and fronting and acting like you this and acting like you this, why don't you go to God in honesty and tell him the truth? Hey, you know what, God? I'm really a little bit broken right now. I'm really been going through some things and I'm struggling. And hey, God, I just wanted to tell you, man, just between me and you, when I ain't flexing and I ain't fronting, I'm actually confused. I need some understanding. I need your wisdom. I need your guidance, man. Because I'm tired of being confused, but I'm acting like I'm okay. I need some help. You know something, y'all? I'm going to tell y'all something. Prayer works, man. Prayer really does work. Prayer changes things. But prayer change people, too. Think about that for a minute. Think of all the ways you try to project yourself. But then the reality of it is. Man, I've had to slow myself down so many times and say, God, make me the man you want me to be. Come on, man, just make me who you want me to be. This idea I have for myself, I could be selling it short. This idea that I have for myself may not be in your will. This idea I have for, your, for myself may not be in your timing. I'm just asking you, God, if you could just step in for me, man, just help me out. I'm tired. I'm tired of getting it wrong. I'm tired of perpetrating. I'm tired of, I'm tired of flexing. I'm tired of acting like I'm something that I'm not. I'm tired of showing people the good side so they'll think I'm just fine. I'm really hurting over here. I really need some help. I'm just coming to you straight up and just saying, hey, could you fix me? Because I don't know how. The first, the, the first idea of solving a problem is at first admitting that you have one. Y'all think about that today, okay? Those are my closing remarks. <laughs> Hope that helps somebody today. Y'all have a great day. Hey, listen, don't forget, talk to God. He would love to hear from you. <laughs> For real. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 